Hey, I'm here with uh, Merja Kajava, and she will be sharing with us some interesting uh, insights from her project around 5G and APIs. So what are you talking about? Cars and stuff, because it's about safe cruising. Interesting topic. And I'll let you take it away. Keep those questions uh, in the chat, and we'll have the Q&A session. Uh, later for all the speakers in this track. Thank you. It's, it's great to tell more about the 5G, Edge and APIs. Um, my name is Merja Kajava. I am the founder of Avista. I have long experience on from technical point as architect working with cloud APIs data machine learning and working on the R&D areas as a consultant as well and currently uh, working from Avista or your company. You are welcome to connect through LinkedIn and Twitter uh, with me. Um, imagine you are driving on a car on a busy traffic and you are trying to see that can you go ahead are there traffic lights do you need to stop would it be nice if you get some reminders immediately that oh you need to stop now this even if you are not a tesla owner it is might be possible if you if you had a mobile phone which would be recording the the traffic ahead and if the phone was sending this information to the nearby cloud, you would get immediately back information that now it's time to stop. You have a red light. This is actually something which can be realized through 5G edge technology and also with APIs. And this also provides or actually gives extra requirements for APIs, and that's what I'm now going to talk about today. Uh, we are all using a lot of the cloud systems. APIs are running on the cloud, and this is very quite a lot of business usuals nowadays. But if you are working with IoT devices, such as the mobile phone, with monitoring IoT devices, vehicles who really need to get fast, fast connections, very small latencies. That's when the 5G will give you additional leverage. And that's when also the edge computing comes in place because you can run the heavy loads nearby edge and you will get very fast times back. You could also do these kind of things on the cloud, but cloud response is typically too slow and that's why you need to bring up the fast kind of promise of the 5G and edge computing. Um, and one thing which is important when you are dealing with the with the vehicles, especially when it comes to the self-driving vehicles, you need to be aware of your own location. You need to know exactly on which lane you are driving so that you don't confuse, for example, the traffic lights from the nearby lanes. For example, in this example, you can see that there are two lanes which have now a green light. And here there is also a red, um, stop it, but not on this lane. So you need to accurately notice where is the vehicle at the moment. And this is what we currently get with regards to accuracy with the current mobile phones and GPS. We can get about 5 to 15 meters accuracy with the GPS location it also depends on your provider and the Wi-Fi, nearby Wi-Fi's, 
the operator's capabilities also affect how accurate location you can get. Uh, Galileo satellites will improve the locations this year, next year, so that you can actually get accuracy down to one meter. And with the 5G technology, the promise is that next year, with the latest 5G release 17, you will get location accuracy down to 15 centimeters. There's also very small network latency next year, and the same also for uploading download speeds, which will be much, much better capabilities. Uh, when we consider the case with the vehicles, the 5G and the edge computing opens really new possibilities. For example, when you are driving, you are recording your location, your premises, you can communicate this information to the other vehicles who are also capable with the with this um, specification. And there are also possibilities with the newer traffic light infrastructure so that your can, vehicle can communicate directly with the new traffic light. And if you are recording the view in front of the car, the video capturing and streaming is helped by the better improved speed and smaller latency. Uh, we had a pilot case to, to kind of evaluate that can you actually automatically predict or detect traffic lights from the traffic when you are driving in the car. This was a proof of concept which was um, organized by Forum Virium Helsinki, uh, which is the innovation hub at the city of Helsinki. Telia was also providing the 5G capabilities and Lempe startup company provided RAIN platform. And the scenario was the following. Uh, instead of having expensive LiDAR cameras on the car, um, the idea was to use the mobile phone to record the images. And the the prediction to be done on the edge. It's and to indicate that if you can actually see the traffic light and what's the status of the traffic light ahead. And this information could be also used, for example, to provide information to map providers. And if you want to complete the scenario, the driver would immediately get the feedback back while driving through the crossings. And the purpose of this kind of scenario is to provide additional safety features for the driver. Here is the case which was realized this summer, this spring, uh, when you take the photo using the mobile phone when running through the computer vision you can actually detect the traffic lights from the photo you can also pick pick the GPS location and place it on the on the map um, some of the code was open sourced so you can actually go and look at the code and some sample images and maps on GitHub. So if you go to GitHub, find Arvista, you can see some examples there if you're interested. How does this kind of scenario with IoT, small latency, affect the API requirements? One thing to consider is the human reaction time. 
there needs to be enough time for driver to react to the sudden events. Majority of these traffic lights, some pedestrians, cyclists who are coming ahead. And the reaction time is really, really small. And this means that when you are actually going through the end-to-end the -end flow, the entire uh, round trip must be less than 150 milliseconds. This basically, if you break down this timing, it means that when you collect the data, when you take the image, when you upload the image, it only leaves about 100 milliseconds to actually run the machine learning prediction algorithm. And with the results getting back, there is, should be still time for driver to do the maneuvering of the vehicle. And this is where the 5G edge computing comes in place. And this is when you, if you are designing this scenario as an API architect, you need to consider where do you place the API? Where do you place the logic? Can you actually use cloud for this round trip? Or should you actually look at the edge computing? What kind of um, networking capabilities do you have? Because this one brings very different requirements compared to the normal computing where you use the APIs. Here is an example of the traffic light detection algorithm and the results, or actually how long does it take to run and identify one image. On the right hand side, is the AWS Recognition API, which takes about 0 0.7 seconds to complete and open source CVLIP. It's another library, much faster. And this one kind of shows that the API running on the cloud seems to be a bit too slow, so the edge computing is really needed. And even with this example, this is still too slow, which needs some tweaking. So, um, this now places the requirements for API. When you are dealing with the IoT devices, you really need to think about it. Where do you place the logic when you consider the entire architecture and the components, elements. And you need to consider that how do you, where do you place the API? Is there one endpoint, multiple endpoints? Are they located close by on the edge computing servers or are they, is there just one API which is serving all the users. And the latency impact is indeed the important thing. If you don't remember anything else from this talk, consider the latency. And this is of course important thing when you are designing kind of the more traditional applications which don't have exactly this kind of demanding. Uh, speed requirements. Um, this was a very short introduction to the 5G, edge computing and APIs, and hopefully you got some kind of glimpse into the future also what can be done when you combine new technology, 5G with edge computing, with the machine learning capabilities and when you bundle this together with APIs. Um, if you are interested, I'm happy to, to answer any questions 
related to this topic. Yes, so thank you, Maria. And uh, you were worried about the time, but actually <laughs> you finished a bit early. So in case you have any uh, questions from the audience, we can take them now. And in the meanwhile, when, when people might be thinking about what to ask, uh, I have a few questions of my own. And then we have the next speaker uh, also there, Janne, who is kind of in the same industry. So actually it would be interesting to have a few, few um, short discussions too. And we will have the Q&A session, longer Q&A session where, where we'll all have, um, we'll have a really interesting kind of taxi uh, versus kind of public and all manners of traffic versus these self-driving cars in the Q&A session at, at quarter past three, so I'm looking forward to it. But Maria, you have been working with this kind of, um, well, all kinds of data and APIs and, 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 and maybe like not so much maybe devices, except that you have that biking uh, kind of product that you are developing, but how does it feel kind of, what is the difference between working with actual things like cars and, traffic lights and stuff uh, when when the, you're thinking of APIs versus the kind of more data-centric approach like invoices and stuff that you used to work with more? Um, you actually have to think about them in a more practical terms. For example, mm -hmm. when you talk about the cars, the number of cars is fairly large. They are geographically distributed, you actually have to think about from practical the view. It's the same thing like with the bikes when you yeah. are looking at the, at the and predicting the availability of bikes. So, and the geography is very important thing because you actually have to be so aware of the location. Yeah. There and are these yeah. Okay. Yeah, you can have a kind of like the data that the bike is in, uh, bike exists and, or car exists and it's in a certain location, but is it really there <laughs> or somewhere else is like the physical problem. And, and also you have to think about the physical safety and not just the kind of cyber security. <laughs> and the and uh, there are also some surprising things like even if you are looking at the traffic lights, you mm. might have some small child who is coming in front of the car and it's not a traffic light you still need to recognize it <laughs> yeah exactly so, but Tuukka here has a, a good question so can you summarize how the latency is divided by between the camera 4g versus 5g network and the machine learning model um i would say that the machine learning model the predictions takes the largest part of the of the latency mm -hmm. and even if you the building of the machine learning model is normally slow. It actually happens that the prediction is not that fast always. So you need to kind of see that how do you run the predictions? Do you actually sometimes need to cache the results? That's not really possible when you are doing real-time images. Mm. But the prediction is surprisingly, takes surprisingly much of the entire time. Yeah. Any other questions from the audience? Keep them coming. 